He's Howard Eibach, a former copywriter and creative director and the author of two books on the creative brief. And he's Henry Gomez, an ad agency strategist with 27 years of experience. Together, we're the Brief Brothers. We love talking about creative briefs, briefing, and advertising. We're back for another episode, Henry. And, you know, we've been loving talking about the nuts and bolts of the creative briefs. So we've got another topic. We've talked before about, you know, do you keep a creative brief? Do you, do you always rewrite a creative brief, even though it's a similar campaign a year, a year later, six months later? But one of the things we haven't talked about is when do you not need to write a creative brief? I've come across this uh, question in my training with uh, mostly marketers, but I'm curious to hear from your perspective as an agency brief writer. When do you not need to write a creative brief? So I've been thinking about this since you floated the topic, and I've come up with at least four instances. Um, they might not all be applicable to everybody, um, but at least four instances where you don't need to write a creative brief. Um, and maybe some more will occur to me as we're, as we're talking. But to me, the first one, and, and you know, the one that's probably the most common, is let's say you wrote a brief, you created a campaign, campaign is successful, client likes it, and you need to refresh creative. Like it's okay, what's the next step in that campaign? If the facts on the ground haven't changed that much or at all, um, I think starting from the last brief you wrote is a perfectly legitimate place to be. Um, you know, you're probably still gonna have a briefing as a sort of kickoff. Typically you're gonna find that there's new people assigned that didn't work on the first campaign or maybe that worked on the first campaign, but their idea didn't get selected. So early in the process, they kind of moved aside and they didn't necessarily see where all the creative ended up. Um, so you're still gonna wanna set aside time for the meeting, for the briefing, but the brief itself, I, I, think, there's, I think there's too much belief that things change quickly. And they don't change that quickly. Like the research that you had a year ago probably hasn't changed that much in a year. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the things on the ground, your market share, like they could change slightly. Um, there might be some, you know, you have a situation like COVID, you might have an addendum while you're talking or briefing and say, well, now this is how COVID has affected our industry or the consumers or whatever. But those are rare, rare things. You know, usually things move a lot slower than what we're led to believe in terms of, you know, situation on the ground. So I that, would say that, that prompts a question, though, for me. What if you wrote a brief that, you know, produced some good creative and the same campaign comes up again for a year later? Doesn't even have to be a year, but you've got new people on the client side and they haven't seen this brief. Well, I'm, I might have to, I might have to sell them on it. Now it, it, it's always going to depend on how the assignment comes to us, because if they're asking for new creative and they've already been familiarized with the existing creative there, they might come back and there might be a negotiation there and say, the agency wants to continue down the, the, but understanding that the new personnel might not have the same point of view as the old yeah. personnel that approved mm. the previous campaign, which is a whole other topic, you know, <laughs> for, for, for your clients, the marketers, right? I think part of what they should be trained in is how to appreciate what's been done before and not completely, mm. not have a bias toward discarding it just because it came before their day. Um, because a lot of times people wiser than us, um, came up with the stuff and it's not necessarily apparent to us why it's brilliant and it behooves us to at least study it a little bit like right. I, I, right. I you know it's completely tangential but you hear people all the time talking about we need a constitutional amendment for this and said you're smarter than the framers of the constitution right okay you and your <laughs> three credits of political science that you took while you were a liberal arts major, you're, you're not, you're not smarter than the framers. Like, let's leave it alone. It's worked for 250 years. Right. Or um, go for it, go for it. Good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think recognizing that good work has come before is part of it. And so that would be like a time to, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Now, sometimes you write a brief and the, the brief, successfully used in generating a campaign and that campaign has within it a tagline or a theme line that encapsulates is maybe 
a much better copywritten version of the promise that we had in the single-minded proposition. And sometimes I'll take that and embed it like a DNA into the into the existing brief and put it as the single-minded proposition. Just because it's a more evolved version of the single-minded proposition, that's what consumers have already seen. So I've done that in the past as well, which is tinkering with the brief, but it's not rewriting uh, the, the brief. Yeah, I would, I would agree. You're taking the best element of what came from the first brief in the creative and embedding that back into the brief. That makes sense. So there's another occasion when you don't need a brief. And this one is like a duh. Of course, you don't need a brief. But it's worth mentioning is like sometimes you have to take an existing ad or execution and you have to update it for some reason. Like you have to change the legal copy or you have to change the voiceover to address a sales event or there's some some sort of edit, um, you know, change a headline. Um, those types of things because you're taking a piece of creative and you're largely leaving it intact, um, you don't need to write a creative brief. And I assume that a lot of the volume and a lot of these um, uh, clients that are saying, oh, we have all these assignments, a lot of this is kind of this minutia of updating an ad, changing it for a specific geography, things like that, that do not require a, a creative brief. Again, it's kind of a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, this is the next one is one that affects me a lot um, because I work at a multicultural agency specifically um, do a lot of work in the Spanish language. And that's when we receive a piece of finished creative or nearly finished creative that was created for the total market or the general market. And now we're being asked by the client to adapt it into Spanish. So that when that happens, there's not a lot of leeway for um, you know, changing the creative. So therefore you're not really gonna need a creative brief. Again, there might be a briefing because I as a strategist wanna explain to the creatives what I've, because I've probably seen the brief that the general market agency wrote and I need to kind of explain to them what's, what's trying to be communicated um, so that then we can come up with the best adaptation. And then, the fourth instance that I could think of where you wouldn't need a creative brief is something that I think more and more people are facing. And that's if your agency or you're internally at a client responsible for managing the social media accounts for a uh, brand, you're not going to have a creative brief for every social organic social media post that goes out there. Um, it's just not uh, feasible to do so because you're talking about accounts that might post anywhere from once a week to several times a week um, on social media. So instead of a brief, what you probably have is an overarching strategy that talks about, you know, what the brand stands for, what within each social media channel, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is, TikTok, what types of messages we, we put in there, some ground rules about subject matter um, and some best practices. And then all these ads always have to get approved by the client for sure, but you're not looking at a specific brief for each one. And, and a lot of, you know, let's face it, a lot of social media posts are supposed to be kind of conversational with what's going on in the popular culture. And it's supposed to be quick reacting. So they don't lend themselves to, you know, I'm going to write a brief every time I'm, I, you know, I'm going to do a, a social media post. So in that kind of fast moving world of, of social media, I think you need to set out a strategy, um, make sure everyone is well versed in that, um, the, the creatives, the community manager, everybody who, who touches the social media accounts, and then you start executing um, uh, at a pretty rapid clip and getting those things approved and in, in the pipeline to get them into the social media. So what I'm taking away from, from this, your four points here, Henry, is the insight that says you don't need a creative brief for these four instances, and then there might be others. But what you always have to do is have a briefing. It's a separate, a separate thing, but inter, inter, intimately connected to what the brief is. You still have to have that conversation with the creative department so there's clarity about what the assignment is. Absolutely. I mean, if we're updating an existing ad, I mean, sometimes it's simple. It's just change the headline to this. But sometimes it's 
change the headline to reflect X, Y, and Z. And there's kind of a creative assignment within it, but you have to have that conversation, I think. I mean, sure, you can email that, but uh, it's always best to have, look at people's faces and say, Are you, mm -hmm. do you understand what we're asking you to do so that then there's no, um, you know, round and round with getting approvals because we didn't understand um, what the assignment was. Yeah, I, I think the definition of a briefing is a conversation, not a lecture. It's, this is what I think, do you have any questions? Let's talk about this, anything that's not clear. So a briefing has to be two way. I, yep. I, would, I would say that from the marketer's perspective, which is where I come in to this picture of, you know, when do you write a brief? The question does come up from time to time, do we need to write, you know, this brief over again? And I say, you need to decide, you need to make a strategic decision within your, within your um, organization be, because you have so many projects going through your pipeline that from, from this line and above, this is absolutely mandatory briefs. And those are usually bigger projects. And from here below, these do not necessarily require briefs. The line doesn't have to be hard and fast. It can fluctuate. But I think your four criteria fit nicely uh, for marketers who are more have, have the responsibility of writing briefs at an, in an in-house agency or from the from just from the marketer's perspective, providing some kind of input to the to the um, to the creative team. So four four good ideas on on what uh, to be thinking about when you ask the question, do I need to write another brief from scratch? And the answer is not necessarily. Yeah, Good stuff, in, fact, in fact, in a lot of cases, um, the answer might be no. I mean, to your point, these clients that are concerned about the volume of workload that they have, I would say probably a, a lot of that volume is stuff that does not require a creative brief every time. It might require a really good creative brief to be written at one point yep. from which they can refer to for a lot of these little things later on. Good stuff, Henry. Good stuff, Howard. He's Henry Gomez. And he's Howard Ibach. And together we're the Brief Brothers. Till next time. Bye-bye.